All right, let's continue this box optimization problem. We came up with a domain for that thing, and we have yet to do some calculus. We're going to need another sheet of paper for that. Here we go. So let's take the derivative here so we can find some critical numbers. Our volume was equal to 27x minus 1 fourth of x cubed. Taking the derivative gives us 27 minus 3 fourths x squared. I took the derivative so I can find the critical numbers, which is where this thing is equal to 0 or possibly undefined, where it's not going to be. Minus 3 fourths x squared. Okay, solve this thing for x is equal to 27. You could divide, no, you could multiply by 4 and divide by 3, but I'm going to divide by 3 and multiply by 4. So if I divide by 3, I get 9. And 9 times 4 is 36. Totally convenient. x is equal to plus or minus 6. I do have two critical numbers, but recall that our domain is between 0 and the square root of 108. And the square root of 108 is a little bit bigger than 10, right? Just a little bit bigger than 10. And uh, our other critical number is going to be to the left of the 0. We don't want it. So really, our only critical number in the domain is x is equal to positive 6. OK, just because I got a critical number, there's no guarantee that that is the absolute minimum or the absolute maximum. You still have to do some more calculus. I can't use the closed interval test for obvious reasons. Even though I have some equations right here, it can't be x can't be equal to 0 because then you have no box, and x can't be equal to the square root of 108 because, again, you don't have a box. It's got to be sandwiched in between there. So we're going to do either the first or the second derivative test. Since on the other one I did a second derivative test, why don't we go ahead and do a uh, first derivative test? Sounds good to me. First derivative test. I think I spelled it correctly the first time. So the first derivative test, you're going to take uh, the domain, which is from 0 to square root of 108, and break it up with your critical number, like so. Enter vowels. And our intervals, our first one, is going to be from 0 to 6. And then our second interval is from 6 to the square root of 108. 10 ish. And let's pick some test values in here, like I don't know, 1 and maybe hmm, 7, something along those lines. And then where do those go? It is the first derivative test, so it makes sense that it goes into v prime of x. And we only care about the sign. Is it positive? Is it negative? What's going on here? So if I stick in 1 here, I'll stick in 1. I am subtracting away 3 fourths from this. It's going to be, that's definitely smaller than 27. It's going to be a positive number, which means that v is increasing. Hmm, I wonder what it's going to do at 7. All right. Um, hey, you know what? I'm going to choose instead. I'm going to choose 8 because 8, eight squared is 64. 64 divided by 4 is... 16 times 3 is 48. Now 48 is bigger than the 27. It's going to be negative. Negative, so it's decreasing. Inc to de decreasing. You found yourself a relative maximum point here. But we can justify this as the absolute max because x equals 6 is the only critical number in our interval. from 0 to the square root of 108. OK. All right, so we have the x value. I know how big that we are going to make the bottom of the box here, but we still haven't answered the question. The question is, what is the maximum volume? Well, the maximum volume, all i got to do is plug it into my volume equation, my x equals 6. And where is that volume equation? Here it is. Here's my volume equation. So if I plug in 6 here, v equals Let's see, 27 times 6 minus 1 fourth times 6 to the 
third power. Okay, yeah, I guess I could do that. Or I could just go that this thing is a 6 by 6. And then didn't we have an equation for this? Let's see, for the height. So this is 36. And down here on the bottom is 24. 108 minus 36, 108. Hit the clear button. 108 minus 36 divided by 24. So we need to do a little bit 24. Is a 3. Okay. 6 by 6 by 3. There we go. And our volume then is going to be 6 times 6 times 3. 36 times 3 is 108 inches cubed. Does this mean that the volume and the surface area are exactly the same? No, it doesn't. And the reason why it doesn't is because of units. These are square units and these are cubic units. They don't mean the same exact thing even though they have the exact same number attached to it.